Good morning, Brady Manual Saints and friends, and those of you joining us live on live stream. Saints, it is my prayer that I teach this lesson effectively so that you understand truly how important praising God really is. Come with me to lesson number nine in our Sunday school book. And for those of you who do not have a book, don't worry. You can follow along because I'll be doing it from scripture. It's titled, I Just Want to Celebrate. Uh -oh. <laughs> the scripture reading will be coming out of Psalms 149, verses 1 through 5. And then we'll end in Psalms 150 verses 1 through 6. Now through my studying of this lesson, All right. Come on now. I understand praising God today a little more than I knew before. Uh -huh. So I need you to think about what I'm going to be saying. Yeah. First of all, praising is expressing value or worthiness to God because of what he has done and is doing. Okay. Uh -huh. Let me say that one more time. Yeah. Praise is expressing value or worthiness to God because of what he has done and is doing. Yes, sir. God, God's problem with us, mankind, is what he designed us for glorifying him. We are too preoccupied oh. with our earthly situations. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Worship is not praise. Hmm. All right. You can worship privately without saying a word. All right. You can worship in your heart. Uh-huh. Okay. Your mind. Okay. Or in silence. Come on now. But you can't do that with praise. Mm -hmm. Speak to us this morning. Praise is publicly showing God mm -hmm. and letting everyone else know He's our deliverer. Uh -huh. In Psalm 34 and verse 3, it says. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh -huh. Magnify means make it bigger. All right, all right. God should be bigger in our life than our earthly situations. Uh -huh. So I hear you saying, how? How do we make God bigger than our everyday circumstances? I know that's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where I learned more about praise from my study. Okay. In order to really praise God more than you're doing, well, it depends on how much more you're willing to learn about God. Yeah. You see, the less you know about God, the less you're going to praise him. The more you know, the more you're going to praise him. Come on, come on, come on. In simple terms, like in everyday life, the person or persons you affiliate with more are the ones you appreciate more. Come on. Our level or higher knowledge about God raises our praise about God. Uh -huh. Our praise will go from natural, the outside, uh -huh. to spiritual, from the inside. Uh -huh. yep, yep. This all depends on the amount of time and experiences we spend and have with God. Yes, sir. Saints, the more we learn about God, mm -hmm. 
the more we'll talk about God. Uh -huh. Then, the more we'll become like Christ. Not like Mike. Okay. Look at this example in Leviticus 27 and 30. God says, give him 10%. Yeah. That's, this. That's just not in tithes. That's in everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's apply it to time. There's 24 hours in a day. Yeah. That means two hours and 40 minutes of every day should be time with God. Amen. Talk about it. Talk about it. Listen. I'm guilty. Just like you. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to make is as we get into the lesson, mm -hmm. remember, we'll praise God more when we get to know him more. Come on now. He'll become bigger than the coronavirus. Yeah. Come on, God. He'll become bigger Come on now. than the world leaders' issues. Come on yeah. now. He'll become bigger than our health conditions. Yeah. Yeah. We'll even learn to praise him. Don't miss this. Come on now. Through our struggle. Through. Yeah. Not that we're struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Saints, Psalms 149 is a call to God's people uh -huh. to praise him and the wonderful privilege we have of giving glory to God. Amen. Now as a reminder, you all know from Luke chapter 19, verses 38 through 40, uh -huh. what we call Palm Sunday. It's when Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a bar of donkey. All right. The people were shouting, Blessed is the king. Uh -huh. Quoting Psalms 118 and 26. And the Pharisees got angry and told Jesus to stop them from singing praises that he was the Messiah. Come on now. Yeah. They felt it was blasphemy hmm. because it was implying. He was the anointed one. Uh -huh. The one God had sent to save them. Okay. Come on. But Jesus basically told them, if they don't, my people, <laughs> sing praises, I can have those rocks and stones Come on. sing Come on. praises unto me. Yeah, yeah. Saints, you see. There should never be a time when we're not praising God. Uh -huh. God wants us to do it. And we'll see later, he commands us to do it. Okay. Uh -huh. But by the act of our free will, he's not going to make us do it. Okay. He wants us to choose to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because then it shows an act of real love. This song emphasizes on will to say I will. Uh -huh. But we but we say I will praise God with all my heart. All right. With all my mind and with all my soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. That means there's nothing else left. Uh-huh. Saints, as we get to know God more, we won't just be going through the motions. Uh -huh. This lesson will show us the where, the why, and the how mm -hmm. to praise God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Let's start with verse number one okay, right. of Psalm 149. It says, praise ye the Lord. Uh -huh. In Hebrew, Old Testament language, mm -hmm. it means hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving God the highest praise. Right. Yeah, right. What better way to praise him than to give him your best? 
verse 1b states, Sing unto the Lord a new song. Okay. Uh -huh. Talking to believers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sing to God a new song. Mm -hmm. Because God has given you new blessings uh -huh. and new mercies. The author is singing, the author is saying, <laughs> sing about what he's done for you lately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seeing that he's forgiven you. Uh -huh. Seeing he's kind to you. Seeing about he loves you. Yeah. Put into your songs about these new experiences of God's grace. Come on now. That he has bestowed upon you. Verse 1c goes on and says, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Talk about Sing praises in the gathering of the faithful. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now verse 2 states, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Uh -huh. Being in Israel, God's people should desire to praise him because the creation is never better than the Creator. Come on. Come on. To be says, let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Uh -huh. Let the Israelites of Jerusalem be jubilant in the praise, which is not feeling you have to. Uh -huh. But that you want to. Yeah. Because he was their king. Uh -huh. Verse 3 says, Let them praise his name in their dance. Uh -huh. This is talking about praising his name because we are so joyful and thankful for what he's done and doing in our lives. Uh -huh. How many of you know when praising God and remembering back on all he's done uh -huh. and the experience with God, it's like you can see him. Yeah. These experiences will have you overwhelmed in the supernatural. Yes, yeah, sir. Like, if you're happy and you know, say amen. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. happy and you know, stomp your feet. Yeah. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Come if on. you're happy and you know, then your life will surely show you. Yeah. If you're happy and you know it, raise your hand. <laughs> <pain. laughs> See, saints, when you really praise them, it'll take you there. Before you know it, you'll be dancing. Yeah. But it's godly dancing. Right, yeah. Yeah. Not circular dance. Right. Yeah. Or sexual in nature. Yeah. I know the spirit has taken some of you there before. Come on. Yeah. Moving on to verse 3. It reads, Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Mm -hmm. This is saying God wants us to sing unto him. We must be careful though, uh -huh. when we sing a song because when it becomes more important to us uh -oh. than who we are singing to, uh -huh. what say? it's not praising God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God tells us also to include instruments. Whoa. This music becomes a gift 
when it's aimed toward him. Wow. I still can't remember, and probably some of you, the women who could play the temple. That's the tambourine. Uh -huh, that's it. And they could hit it on their hip mm -hmm. and still play it and make a joyful noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. God loves this. Uh -huh. Verse 1 5 talks about for the Lord, still meaning God, which is his title, not his name. Just, well, back to verse 4, because I give a quick explanation about, in the Hebrew, God's name was Elohim, uh -huh. Elohim. The I am suffix in the Hebrew makes it plural. Uh -huh. So God is one, but in three persons. Okay. Right, right, right. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. That was just a quick explanation I wanted to give you. Because some were saying, well, why are they saying the Lord here? <laughs> but back to verse 4. It says, for the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. And verse 5, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. This is saying, praise God, because he deeply loves his people. Come on now. And he especially rewards the humble. Yeah, yeah. Those who do not take pride in themselves uh -huh. and boast is only about God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise on those occasions because he gives us the victory with salvation. Okay. Yeah. Even in bed yeah. with the pillow under our head. Mm. Uh -huh. Praise him because you're not dead. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Saints, Psalm 150 shows us where, why, and how God wants to be worshipped. And deserves to be praised. This is a command. As believers, even when we're hurting with no song on our hearts mm -hmm. or our minds, when we start remembering about the greatest sacrifice of men, uh -huh. Jesus died on the cross. So we can have eternal life. Amen. This alone ought to connect us back to our source. Uh -huh. God and to praise his holy name. Come on now. Come on, Chris. Come on. Talk to us. In verse 1 of Psalm 150, okay. it tells us where we should praise God. Okay. Uh -huh. It says, Praise ye the Lord again. This in Hebrew means, in Hebrew means, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The highest praise. Verse 1 B and C reads, praise God in his sanctuary. Uh -huh. Praise him in the firmament, firmament of his power. We ought to praise God in the temple uh -huh. where God's people assemble. Yeah, right. Then in the firmament of his power, meaning praise him everywhere. Yeah. Including heaven. Uh-huh. Come on. Let me give you a quick example of God wanting to be praised. Let's go look at sports. And I know you don't have to be a follower of sports to know this. Uh-huh. When a player makes a good play, the first thing that they do in any sport is throw their hands up to acknowledge the fans. Uh -huh. Come on. Basically saying, I can't hear you. Come on, yeah. 
I can't hear you. Well, that's what God is saying to us as believers. Come on, man. I can't hear you. Yeah. Saints, make sure you get your praise on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Verse 2 tells us why we should praise God. It says, praise him for his mighty acts. Uh -huh. Meaning, praise him for what he has done. Uh -huh. Praise him for splitting the Red Sea. Yeah. Praise him for walking on water. Uh -huh. Praise him for healing you in your sick bed. Yeah, yeah. Praise him for he made a way out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise him for his son dying on the cross because of me and your sin cause. Uh -huh. You see, there's no better way to praise God than when you remember or have a history with him. Uh -huh. You see, that's why we can say, I'm so glad. Twelve on all that. Always. Verse 2, B says, Praise him according to his excellent greatness. This is for who he is. Lord of lords. And king of kings. Yes, sir. When we really know who God is, it will influence us on who we are. A sinner. Come on now. Saved by yeah, yeah, yeah. We sing. God is. Yes, God is. Yes, God is. Uh -huh. My everything. Come on, man. Saints. Come on. I hope we love that song. But we need to love it for who God is. Yeah. And not because it's what we like. Yeah. Verse 3 through 5 teaches us how we should praise God. One thing that should jump out that should jump out at you when reading this verse is it doesn't say anything about words. These three verses. Come on now. I hear you. You're asking why. Well, in many of the songs, it tells us to sing songs. That's already been established. Come on now. So now these three verses is saying we should accompany the songs oh. with musical instruments. What do you say? If we really want to praise how God wants us to, uh -huh. we need to get out the trumpets, uh -huh. the string instruments, uh -huh. and the harps and tambourines. Yeah. Even in Old Testament times, musical instruments and singing was always a part of their celebrations. Yeah. Because it's not about what we want. It's about what God wants. Uh -huh. yeah. It's right here in the book. Now as we get to the end of the lesson, verse 6 says, let everyone that have breath uh -huh. praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Now hear me out. We are not all children of God. Uh -huh. We're all created by God. Yeah. This verse is talking about the godly and the ungodly. Yeah. Talk about it. Those who choose to only know of God. We believers, though, who know who God is, yeah. are to let them know also through our remarkable praise. Yeah. Praise 6 B reads, Praise ye the Lord again. Uh -huh. As we've learned earlier in this lesson, it's saying, Give God the highest glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. In closing, 
This lesson reminds me of a song. And a lot of you know it. In 1988, it reached number one on the Billboard charts. Uh huh. Come on now. It talked about a man named Shalom John. Uh huh. I know now you know it. Yeah. He had joined a dead church. Yeah. They didn't believe in shouting and dancing, right, right. singing and dancing. <laughs> so they went out to John's house. And told him they didn't believe in that. Right. John said, I'm going to praise him in the morning. Right. Uh -huh. I'm going to praise him all night long. Yeah. I feel like praise him, praise him. Yeah. 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 The name was Home oh, Ami. It was by Shirley Caesar. Yeah. The point of her song was keep praising God no matter what people think. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. And to God be the glory. Amen. And don't forget, get your praise on.
morning to all of you, and we're so very excited to have you join us once again in our exciting Sunday services here at the Great Emmanuel Baptist Church. We welcome those of you who are present with us in our sanctuary, as well as we welcome all of you that's joining us by social media. We're going to have, ask those of you that's in our sanctuary, and even those of you that are at home, uh, stand up in them uh, pink bunny slippers and, and, bat, and pull that bathroom and stand up with us at the house. And those of you that, that's here, we want to stand in, as, as, uh, as our uh, musician leave us in a, just a, a, a verse of an opening song, and, and then we're going to come back with a scripture and a prayer. Word. 
mountain and all hill, fruitful trees and all cedar, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men, that's me, and, and, and maidens and old men, that's, that's somebody else, and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above earth and heaven. He also exalted the horns of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. All people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. That's hallelujah. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers here and doers of most of the world. Thank you so very much. We may be seated at this time. And as we uh, take our seats, I'm going to ask you to bow your head with me in a word of prayer. Most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you and we do praise you once again for being so merciful, so gracious, so kind to sinners like us. Thank you once again for giving us our life. Thank you once again for giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength, the activity and use of every joint of our body, strength to stand and to walk and to go about and do your will. We thank you, Lord, for putting your hands of protection around us all last week and keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, Lord, for providing for all of our needs each and every day so that we won't lack or want for nothing. And we even thank you, Lord, for guiding us safely over the very dangerous streets and highways and giving us a mind to come by this house of worship to spend this time of prayer with you. But most of all, Father, we want to thank you for your love that you commended to us that while we were yet sinners, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary Hill to pay for our sins, so that we might be saved. And we thank you, Lord, that you didn't leave him in the grave, but three days later you got him up out of that grave with all power in heaven and earth in his hands, that we might have life eternal.
time of praise, but but as uh, Pastor Hudson will always say, it's preaching time. And 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 we come here to hear a word from the Lord. And this morning we we're very happy to have one of our own who's going to come and, and share with us what the Lord has given to him. So I want you just to say a big amen to Reverend Jose Pruitt as he comes to give us what God has done has given to him. Amen. of 
nowhere. Come on now. And got a man that he had raised from birth. A man that believed in idolatry. A man that was a murderer by the name of Moses and called him to pastor over five million people. When he wanted a king for Israel, he selected a liar, a murderer, an adulteress by the name of David and made him the king. When he wanted a witness, he went to a town called Jericho and selected a whore by the name of Rahab that she made witness to his greatness. We as a people must be careful how we direct God's people as leaders. Amen? Amen. The woman at the well. Jesus told her, he says, the time will come when you will no longer worship me in the mountains or in Jerusalem which signified the church. But you will worship me in spirit and in truth. Every word that Jesus spoke has meaning. And if he said the time will come when you will worship me in spirit and in truth, other words, spirit and truth was not being worshipped in the church. Are you with me? In spirit and in truth. Yeah. Now, let's get to the, the body of this message. Let's go to chapter 26 of Matthew. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these things. Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembly together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas. They concerted that they might take Jesus by security and kill him. That's enough. The Passover with the king. The Passover. Those two disciples that went into town, to Jerusalem, 
was Peter and John. Yes, sir, I did. All right. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they came ready for the Passover. They were to meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was unusual for males to carry water. It was the responsibility of the women. Yes, sir. This is how this man that was not given a name would be recognized and tell him that the master is ready. Yeah, yeah. Verse 19. And it got and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Okay. Now when the eleven was come, he sat down with the twelve. Judith had come in. The eleven were there. Judas and I had come in and made the twelve. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Judas was not there from the beginning. He came in a little later. And as they did eat, he said, Very I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. I want you to listen to these scriptures and see exactly what God is saying. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Are you with me? Uh -huh. The disciples were sitting there. Well, let me back up a little bit. Let me, let me paint this picture. The Lord's Supper was not as most of us think it was. They were not sitting in nice, comfortable chairs. All right. Are you with me? Yeah. They had pillows. That they were set on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Are you with me? They were leaning somewhat to the left. You with me? Uh -huh. Incomfortable. Incomfortable. And they would dip with their right hand. Yeah. There was one bowl. Everybody didn't have a dish. There was one bowl that everybody would dip from. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. All right. Verse 22. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it me? Uh -huh. And he answered and said, it is he that dip his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Mm -hmm. Every one of them was dipping with him. Right. Just because you dip first, one dip second, one dip third, they you all was dipping with him. Mm -hmm. And they all had a thought within themselves, who in the world could it be? Right, right. They even looked at themselves and said, could it be me? Come on. Is it I? Is it something that I've done that I'm not aware of? Is it me? Listen to what he said. The Son of Man goeth that is it written of him, but woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Yes, sir. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. My Lord. I'm sorry. Are you a minister? 
Right there. If you I want you to join me. Okay, go ahead. All right. Then Judith, verse 25. Then Judith, which betrayed him, and answered and said, Master, is it I? Are you with me? Let's go back to verse 22. Verse 22. All the 11 disciples said, Lord, is it I? Judas said, Master, is it I? There's a difference between Lord and Master. Are you with me? When Jesus chose the 12 disciples, he said, I have chosen 12 of you, and one of you is the devil. Are you with me? When the disciples recognized Jesus as Lord, they recognized him as their Savior. Are you with me? Uh -huh. They recognized him as the one that is responsible for their existence. They recognized him as being the one that if it was not for you, there would be no us. Other words, he was God to them. Yes, sir. Right. But in a sense that they didn't even recognize. Yeah. But Judas said, Master, uh -huh. is it I? Right, right. He recognized Jesus as being a master teacher, but not right. Lord of his life. Right, right. Come on, Come on, Are you with me? Right. Good point. G Judas was in the midst of the congregation but he was never part of the congregation. He would be in service everywhere Jesus would go, but yet he was not one of them. Are you with me? And we have that going on today. We have folk that come to church every Sunday, but still not a child of the master. Judas says, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it, break it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is of my body. The breaking of the bread represents the crucifixion. Are you with me? Yeah. But there were some people said that the eating of Jesus' body represent cannibalism. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. <clears throat> Every time that you try to do what is right, there's going to be always somebody there. That's going to say what you're doing is wrong. Wow. You yes, sir. There was talk, rumors, mm -hmm. rumors, that Jesus was a cow right, right. eating his body. Come on, uh -huh. Then he says, and he took the cup, verse 27, and gave thanks. And gave it to him, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Breaking the bread and drinking the wine yeah. symbol, symbolized the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You have to understand what happened on that cross before you can really accept being one of his. You see, Jesus, what we see painted was nothing like 
the reality of how Satan was allowed to treat Jesus. He was beaten so bad that he was unrecognizable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you with me? We will. You only see the back part we talk about, but the front part was just as bad. Yeah. He didn't have a rag or something around him. He was on that cross naked. Come on, come on. Are you with me? Come on, come on, yeah. Humiliation. Yes, sir. Shame. Yeah. This is what they wanted to do to him. Which is shed, is in verse 28, which is shed for many of, of my remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I shall drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus knew that the kingdom was being ushered in. Yeah. Are you with me? And when they had sung songs of him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. This was east of Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, I'm just about getting ready to get out of here. Yeah. Come on, preacher. The chief priest. Yes, sir. And the elders that had conspired to crucify Jesus. Well. They wanted to wait until the week was over. Yeah. Oh. The week of the Passover. Yes, sir. It was on the 14th day, somewhere around the end of March and the beginning of April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to wait until the week was over because there were so many people had come to Jerusalem for the Passover. Right, right. right. There was more than 85,000 people that had come to that city. Okay. And this, this is this is where. When Jesus went in and whipped the people in the temple, it's because the people didn't love the people didn't make the journey with their lambs. They waited until they got to Jerusalem and bought the lambs. Yeah. And there was so congested and so many of them that the merchants moved into the prayer room of the temple. What you said? Are you with me? Yeah. And there they was commercializing and selling land. Right, right. right. Are you with me? Uh -huh. Every holiday that we have <laughs> has been commercialized. Yeah. What yeah. you said? Yeah. You with me? Uh -huh. right. We know that the 25th of December is not the birth of Jesus. No. We know that, but we recognize that. But even so, it has been so commercialized right, right. it's all about money right, right. every holiday we have is about money yes, sir. are you with me yes. now let's look at you this year talking about dipping into the dish come on now come on master is it me you see Judas had a little bit of a mental problem. Okay. Are you with me? Okay. If he think he could have fooled Jesus. What you right. said? Are you with me? And some of us have that same attitude today. Thinking we can fool Jesus. Master, is it I? He should have known Jesus knew exactly that it was he. Yeah. But he wanted to keep his charade going because the other disciples didn't know. Yeah. And Jesus was so compassionate, he did not call him his name. Uh -huh. Because the other disciples would have turned on him. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Yeah. You go and do what you must do. You with me? We must understand the breaking of bread and the crucifixion. When it was all over, they sung songs and went out to the city. And there they took 
charge of Jesus. Uh -huh. Judith recognized him with a kiss. My Lord. You got to be careful who you let kiss you. Uh -huh. That may be an undercurrent plan. Yeah. Emotion. Judith kissed him to identify him. Right, right. And when Judith kissed him, fight broke out and Peter cut him and off. Yeah. <laughs> so that tells me if some of y'all think God's preacher won't fight, you got to misunderstand. Some of us will fight and some of us will cuss. And then some of us will cuss and fight. Don't misunderstand God's people. For we are a peculiar people. Are you with me? But Jesus rebuked Peter and he said, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. They took charge of Jesus. This was earlier than the high priest wanted to be. But Peter had, but Judas had gone on and, and, and done his thing so quickly that they had to go ahead and act. They took Jesus. And from kangaroo court to kangaroo court, he was an idolater. He was a sinner. Uh -huh. You see, when people are against you, uh -huh. they will brand you with anything. Uh -huh. And then they got those other people that they whisper in their ear, uh -huh. and they will believe what yeah. you say. Yes, sir. You got people walking around don't like you because of something what somebody else doesn't yeah. say. Don't know nothing That's right. about you or anything you've done Amen. except what the one that don't like you have said about you. Yeah, that's right. wow. You see, that, that, that's why they always kill the messenger. <laughs> you see, because the messenger don't never tell it like it is. And if he does tell it like it is, he going to put some him in it. His expression or the way he said it. Yeah, yeah. Are you with me? Uh -huh. And you represent the message. Yeah, yeah. And you said in there being very arrogant, delivering a message. Wow. You got to watch who you associate with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have asked. Pray to God. Let the Spirit use us. And those hidden personalities will emerge. Come on down. God ain't got to do nothing else. There's not one word he's got to say. There's not one tree that has to be planted. There's not a piece of water anywhere that has to come. It's already completed. Everything that's in us. All we have to do is let the Spirit have its way. Come on, yeah. That's all. Come they on. took Jesus and they marched him from kangaroo court to kangaroo court. Yes, sir. Trying to prove his guilt. And every court he went to, they found this man in. But look what Pilate did. Mm. Pilate put him on the cross anyway. Mm. Why? Mm. Because it was what the people wanted. wanted. Right. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Jesus oh. of Barabbas. Oh. Give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus. And most of those that Pilate crucified was the same one that he had fed. Same one that was sick that he had healed. You 
run around with it. Yes, sir. Amen. You got some folk that'll run with you all day long. And soon as you down, they'll get on top of you on the crowd and push you down even further. Yes, sir. Whom do you choose? Jesus or Barabbas? Give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus. They took Jesus out and they nailed him to a cross. Nailed his hands. Nailed his feet. He did all of this suffering for us. Yeah. Are you with me? He stayed on that cross Friday. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. But early Sunday morning he rose yeah. with all power in his hands. Yeah. But before he stepped back into his flesh he had to do something that only God could do. And that was in spirit. He had to go down into the pits of hell yeah. and convert with the angels that was locked up down there. Those demons. To let them know that victory was at hand. I didn't come to free you. I, I, I didn't come to satisfy you. I really come to torment you. Victory yeah. is at hand. He got up from the grave with all power. Yeah. All power. And he did that for you. And he did that for me. Are you with me? Yeah. So, in the future, when it's time for the Lord's Supper, let us be mindful of what this table represents. Amen. It is the representation of the crucifixion. We will. The eating of the bread, the drinking of the wine. Jesus died for us. But he rose on the third day. Amen. 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 That's all I got to say. Amen. Understanding Jesus. Understanding what he did. Yeah. He's God and he's God all by himself. Yeah. He doesn't need us. We need him. Yeah. I have asked him to do something for me. Don't, don't bring me back to something that you removed me from. I know we all talk about it. I'll be glad when the doors open up and we can go back and do that's what we used to do. Don't you come back here doing what you used to do. Don't you come back here like that. You, you come back with a brand new attitude. You, you come back with the attitude that more of God is going to be seen. I'm going to be more like God. I'm going to represent God more so. God did not give us fear. Some of us allow things to happen because of fear. Let Satan have his way because of fear. Don't you come back here like that. I don't want to come back like that. Come on, yeah. You see, I've got some problems of my own that I have to deal with. Yeah. I don't have time to look at you and talk about your problems. Yeah. Right. I, I can't do that. I don't have that kind of time. The time God has given me, must, I must work on me. You see, God has been too good to all of us. All of us should be dead and in our graves. But we're here. One more day, one more opportunity to say, Lord, 
and Garth from Kew. Boy, Hannah is still in the grave. Yes, sir. Boo down. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is still in the grave. Right, right. The old kinds of history mm -hmm. said that there was a man by the name of Jesus that was hung on a cross, died, and put in a grave. That same man, the old kinds of history said, that was seen walking the streets of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. That same night. And then there was more than 500 believers. Believers only. None believers didn't see this. Just believers. Say that same Jesus caught a cloud in a sacred heaven. Yeah. Believers! It's a matter of record that they saw him. And the angels say the same way you see him leave, you see him come back. Amen. You see, we don't got we don't got too old to keep playing in church. We don't got too old. Jesus been too good to us. When we come back this time, come back ready in spirit and in truth. Don't, don't worry about somebody else. What about yourself? You work on yourself. And God will do the rest. Amen? God bless you. And God keep you.
about when Jesus pointed out that one of his own was betrayed. Yeah. And one by one, they all began to ask Jesus in the eye.
that if you don't know for certain that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and that you know for certain that you're going to be in the kingdom, you need to get it right now. Because something can happen to you just like that. And you won't have time to say, Lord, I'm ready to get saved now. I'm ready to receive you in my heart. You'll be lost for all the eternity. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the other thing that, that, that the preacher said that was so good is that can you distinguish between Jesus as master and law? Maybe because, because a Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, he said, what must I do to be saved? And this is what they said. They said, believe on the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ and you can say. They didn't say, believe on the Master Jesus Christ and you can say. They said, you got to call in the Lord. And so, during this time of invitation, I want each one of you in this sanctuary and those that are viewing by social media to ask yourself one question. Do I know with all certainty and all sure that when Jesus comes into his Father's kingdom and he sets up that banquet table and he calls all those who belong to him to sit down at that banquet table, will I be there? If you cannot say yes, here's your opportunity to take care of that. Because all you got to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and upon the authority of the scripture, you shall be saved. So I ask you, please, if you don't know Christ, do it today. Let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your word today. And we want to thank you, Father, for showing us that Jesus gave his body and his blood to save us from an eternity in hell. And we just come right now, Father, asking that the Spirit will search hearts everywhere. And, and that there are those who, who, who just know him as Master, but they don't know him as Lord. And if there are those who are not certain that when Jesus comes again in his kingdom and sits down at his banquet table, they don't know whether or not they're going to be there or not. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will grab all the reins of their mind, draw them to the feet of Jesus, open their hearts and give them the faith to make Jesus Christ the Savior, Lord, and let's just get that question today. Father, please, don't let no one leave this sanctuary. Don't let no one tune out of this live stream broadcast until they have settled that issue. This is thy servant's prayer prayed in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. At, at this time, it says uh, uh, we're going to have words of inspiration by Sister Bertha Turner. And then afterwards, we're going to have our uh, offertory period, and then we'll have, we, then we'll proceed from that point. Let's, let's say amen, Sister Bertha Turner. Great Emmanuel family. It's a pleasure to be here. My pleasure to be here with you today. And I have a few words to speak about my experience with breast cancer since we're observing this as Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at Greater Emmanuel. So I, um, in my formulating my remarks or my words of encouragement, I set this to be um, a name 
called purposed and predestined. And let me begin by first saying that the word of God is life giving. Mm -hmm. And we reference that in Hebrew 4 and 12. And the next scripture I want to reference is John 6 and 63. Mm -hmm. And it said, Jesus said these words, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Purposed means that to have as one's intention or objective, the reason for which something is created or done, for which everything exists. Right. And then the word predestined is of an outcome or course of event, a course of events determined in advance by divine will or fate. If something was predestined, mm. it could not have been prevented or changed right. because it had already been decided by a power such as God. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then now, um, in Ephesians 1 and 11, we find the scripture that says, in him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, my story with the, on this journey of breast cancer began in 1998 yeah. at the age of 46. Yeah. So, as is customary for our people, when you come home from work, you know you want to get comfortable, you get out of your work clothes, and since we're talking about breast cancer, we know that women wear bras, yes. Okay, so then um, in these bras that were made for women, we had these things in them on both sides, they were called stays, and so every night when I would come home, because I worked the night shift. So I would come home and get out of garments and get comfortable, and I would always do this. <laughs> because that's where those stays were yeah. always were, and yeah. that's what irritates you, so to speak, okay? And so one night I was doing this with my fingers and something moved mm. underneath there. And I could feel it, it was something like the size of a pea. Okay, so that began the journey. I knew that I had a well woman exam coming up in about 20 days or so. So I called the doctor to allow them to know what I needed from them because of what I had discovered. And I say this because it's so important for you to know your own body. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's for yeah, yeah. women as well as men. Mm -hmm. Because you do know that men are dying also from yeah. breast cancer. Yeah. It's not just a women's disease. Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, um, so we went through the, I went through all the steps. I had my well woman exam. My doctor set me up for a mammogram. So since this thing was in my armpit, so to speak, it wasn't in the breast tissue. Mm -hmm. So when they sent the thing back, it said nothing was found. Mm -hmm. But when I was having the, the mammogram done, I had to take the hand of the technician to show her and lead her to where it was mm -hmm. so that she could feel that, you know, it's, what you're looking for is not going to be in the breast tissue yeah, yeah. from this imaging. So we had to go back again for a sonogram. And the sonogram found it. And then from there, I was sent to a breast specialist. He was able to do a biopsy. Mm -hmm. I had to wait then for the biopsy results to come back. So there was another two week period, or not, I don't think that one took two weeks. It may have been one week. So I go back to the doctor and I'm thinking, um, I didn't believe that it was gonna come back, uh, uh, the malignant would be the, the, what he would say. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a Christian, I believe in the word God, mm -hmm. and I had the faith to believe that this is going to be something that's going to be malignant, I mean, going to be benign. Yeah, He's yeah. going to excise it, and I'm going to go on my way. Yeah. Well, when he said that it was a malignant tumor, I was floored. Mm, it wasn't 
the outcome that I expected. Yeah. Come on. Come but on. Yeah. I felt like um, the three Hebrew boys uh -huh. when they were in the fiery furnace. Uh -huh. If my God delivers me, it will be okay. But if he does not, uh -huh. I'm still going to praise the Lord. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so after that, I the, my next question to him was then, okay, now what? What's the next step? Mm -hmm. So he gave me, he said to me, you have choices. Mm -hmm. The choices were to have a, a full mastectomy, mm -hmm. because some women, when they hear the word cancer mm -hmm. in the breast, they want to take the breast off completely, right. both of them. Right. And then the next thing would be a mastectomy with a prosthesis that they will build back up yeah. to put a, uh, the breast on. Uh, again, while you're under, that can be done in, in one fell swoop. Or the next thing would be a lumpectomy. So I opted for the lumpectomy. So I had that done, it was cut out, they got the lymph nodes cleaned and everything, and we were on our way. And then he introduced me, the next step was gonna be to an oncologist. So the oncologist is someone who specializes in uh, the study of tumors. Mm -hmm. Right. And the oncologist that I that he sent me to was someone who was um, famous in his field for oncology and immunology. He was an okay. immunologist. The immunologist is he is the study of the immune system, mm -hmm. and this protects us from infection through various lines of defense. Because if your immune system is down, mm -hmm. it's not functioning as it should. Mm -hmm. um, it could result in diseases such as autoimmunity, allergies, and cancers. So I had the best of both, both worlds in the specialist that he sent me to see. So um, the predestination part of this, when I got to the exam room for to see this specialist, I had, I had been given the doctor's name. I recognized the name because I worked, uh, my, my background at the time was, uh, I worked in the medical field. So in the medical field, I had worked at the Granville C. Morton Cancer Research Hospital out in Harry Hines. This was one of the doctors that had a study and research center out there on Harry Hines at the Cancer Research Hospital. So when I was in, on, the, uh, on his exam table, he walked in and he looked at me and he said, what are you doing sitting on my exam table? This is by divine. God already had predestined yeah, me. He yeah. already knew where I would be yeah. at such a time. And it didn't, and it, my journey like that, even though I didn't get the diagnosis that I thought I was going to get, mm -hmm. it's like the winks and the nods that God gives us to let you know I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. He had prepared the way yeah. for me. And so I didn't have anything to worry about. And what he said to me was, we're gonna get you get this get this done and you're gonna get on with your life and you're not gonna see this anymore. Amen. So this man is not a Christian. He is um uh, like Islamic at the time. Okay. But he knew his field. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it was a comfort to me to be in the hands of someone that I knew and had trusted and had seen some of the things that he had done with the patients that he served at the hospital out there on Harry Hines when I worked with him for about six years. So, um, because I was the third person in my family to receive a diagnosis of cancer, of breast cancer, I saw this as a generational curse. It was an attack of the enemy to me. And so, <clears throat> I knew the word. I had studied the word. I knew my Bible. Uh, of course, I wasn't as mature then in the word as I am now, but what I, I knew that I was facing was a new enemy. Mm -hmm. So my daughter and I went to work. We ordered materials from various ministries about generational curses. I had not had any such experience before, but we did our research and then we went armed with the information that we had uh, to prayer and to seek God's face for direction. And I began, we began to speak words of life 
over my body. Yeah. yeah. We began to decree and declare some things. Yeah. Because that's what authority has been given us. Yeah. Okay. And so we um a decree, Job twenty two twenty eight says that thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established. Mm -hmm. And so what this means for us is that heaven is listening. We've been given authority as uh, in Matthew um, 16, 19, says that I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind in heaven and on earth shall be bound in heaven and right. whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so as we began to make these decrees, binding and loosing, uh, healing and um, these things came to pass in my life. And so we are the ecclesia. Yeah. We've been given that authority yeah. by right. Jesus yeah. Christ. And so we have to be, we have to pray with authority yeah. because it's been given us. And so yeah. we must use that. In Ephesians, it says that he has raised us up together mm -hmm. and made us to be seated in heavenly places. Yeah. Well, who are we seated with? Mm -hmm. We are sitting in a heavenly realm, All right. and we're looking at the things that are going on down here, oh. and we are using our authority because we are what? The governmental body of heaven yeah. on well, this good. earth. And so we have to look at it that way because a decree is... Um, a, a decree is a lawful uh, hold one moment let me see because I got ahead of myself but uh, it's it's a governmental um, hold one moment um, it's a governmental it's a decree that you can make Hold one moment. Okay. It's um it's an official order issued by a legal authority. Yeah. So it is legal because we've been given the authority to do yeah. it. Right. And so it's uh it, it's mandated for us to be able to decrease some things here in the earth. That means changes have to be made. They have to come. It's like the predestination. If you speak it and you are speaking for the oracles of God, not the oracles of Wanda come on. or the oracles of anybody else, but from God's word, then it has to happen. The enemy can't prevent it. He can't stop it. He might delay it because he might get in your head and make you chase after other little things. But if you concentrate on what is what the word of God has said to you about who you are the enemy can't he can't stop that yeah. and so when he comes in up against someone who knows what the word of God says for that for you mm. we are the kind of people that give him a, a headache and that's what we want to do each and every day mm -hmm. because we want to make him he thinks that he's got us on the run when he kept, keeps bombarding us and bombarding us and bombarding us with things, but we're not wimps. We're not wimps. He's got to do more than that, but he doesn't have it in him to do it because he's already a defeated foe. And so we need to stand our ground that God has given us, use the authority that he's placed in our hand, open our mouth and speak the word of God and allow him to know, I see you, devil. You have nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Everything that you have tried, you tried with somebody else, and I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. So right. I have, you know, now we have this new technology. You have an app for everything. I have an app for you. Right. You know, the word of God, these scriptures, yeah. that's an app to apply to everything that the enemy would come Amen. at you with. Yeah. Right. And so as we use these, these new iPhones and all this new technology, Make sure we don't leave the word of God out because that's an app for whatever comes your way. We will not be silenced. So don't let the enemy stifle you, women or men, either one. 
what you are, what you have walked through or what you're beginning to walk through. There's somebody in the house that may need to hear that Amen. because it is life to them because what you speak about what God has done for you is encouraging. It's a testimony, a testimony to what God has done and what he will do. Yeah. Because if he did it for me, he can do it for you too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I mean, I am his favorite, but he has lots of faith. Yeah. We are all God's Thank children you. if you're in the body of Christ. Right. And so we have been given the authority. Take that authority and use it. Open your mouth and do not let anybody silence you. That is what he has called us here to do. And so that's what we do today. And so that's my word of encouragement. Um, the Winans had a song. It, may, it was not talking about surviving breast cancer, but it says, millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Yeah. So allow yourself to speak forth God's word and stay in the word of God and know your authority and use it. Amen. 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 We want to thank uh, Sister Wanda for those wonderful words, <coughs> excuse me, wonderful words of encouragement. And we just want to encourage all of us to trust in God and work with your doctors and your physicians. Because that's why God put them here for, to help us to, to do the things that's needed so that we can, we can stay healthy and, and well. Thank you, Wanda. Appreciate that. I thank you, I thank you Christian, for that. Now at this time, if, if you have brought an uh, offering or tithes or, or you just want to share in, in, the, in, in, the, in the offering, uh, our deacons are going to be uh, gathering uh, trays and they're, they're going to be passing among the aisles and, and, and just if you, if, if you have something you want to share, you can just uh, share that with them at at this time, um, and for those of you that's viewing us by social media, you know that you can also give. You can either put in the envelope, get in the car, and bring it by the church, or you can put it in the envelope and drop it in the mailbox, or you can take advantage of our uh, Giveify uh, app and give. Uh, electronically, or, or, or you may have one of the other uh, electronic uh, giving devices that's, that's available where you can give electronically. But however you do it, we need your support. We need your support. Uh, we still have bills and obligations that we as a church must meet. And we can only do it through the faithful and generous giving of the members of this church. So, so for those of you who have been faithful to give, we want to say thank you. We, we want to say thank you. And, and we want to encourage you to continue to give because we are moving forward and, and, and we're going to do the things that God has called us to do at, here at this church. So, so again, we want to thank you, and at this time, we want to ask those of you that are here in the sanctuary, whether those of you by so many, would you bow with us as we give thanks to God for these gifts. Dear gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to show our love to you through these tithes and offerings that we have just given. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us the resources that we may give back to you. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless us for our faithfulness and giving, and also bless this offering, these tithes and offerings that have just been given. Use them for the purpose for which they were given, the ongoing work of your kingdom here on this earth through this local assembly. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Again, we, again, we want to uh, uh, thank all of you for your presence today. And at this time, our chairman is going to come and he's going to share with us what he has. And then I believe that we have maybe one of our pulpit committee who's going to also share. And then after they get through, 
uh, if our president, if our women would have anything to share, we're going to give place to her. If not, then our speaker of the hour will come back and have the final remarks and give us our benediction. Let's say amen as our chairman comes. Thank you again for uh, participating on the day and sharing with us. Uh, those that are live, a house full of ladies, God bless you. Not too many, we need urchins up here because we got ladies all over the place. So perhaps on next week for Men's Day, we'll have a bunch of urchins here to urge all these men in. Listen, Grandma Crew, thank you so much for that word. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. Does anybody have a mental problem? Uh, if you do, Jesus knows all about it. So, 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 so. You can't hide anything from him. I think Brother Judas, is it, is it mouse? Is it his eye? You know the shit. Come on. Deacon Phillips, thank you for a wonderful Sunday school lesson talking about celebration. I think we've been celebrating all day. And Sister Wanda, thank you for those words of encouragement. Thank you so much. You touched our hearts. I know you did. We got a couple of birthdays to celebrate. Uh, Brother Phil o. Peterson and Brother Breedless Robinson. Uh, so let's wish them a happy birthday. If you get a chance to see them, I might see them a little later on the day. Uh, thank you for them. Um, I'm going to say this, and I don't want to step on any toes, but I, I, I thought about something, and I'm going to say this to my associate minister, and I probably didn't do this in a bit of text message. Text messages don't have feelings. Uh, I thought about when the water was troubling and the guy or the people had an opportunity to get in the water when the water was troubling, had an opportunity to be healed. And I say that to say this, let's tighten up on the invitation. Uh, when the water is troubling, that's when the people are, are ready to come. But if it, if it stays a long time, that water going to cease. And, and that invitation chance is gone. So let's tighten that up. So all the social ministers, let's tighten that time up. Okay? Right. Let's pray for Deacon Kelly, who will be having surgery on the 30th, total knee replacement. So let's pray for him, pray for his family. Uh, that surgery will be Wednesday of this week, so let's pray for him. Let's also pray for Sister Valencia Williams, who is recovering from an automobile accident. So let's pray for her. Right. On next Sunday, next Sunday, the first Sunday of November, is our men's day. Yeah, yeah. Next Sunday, <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. Next Sunday is our men's day. Come on out, men, and celebrate with us. The ladies have filled up this day, and it's not even women's day. So come on out and, and, and celebrate with us on next Sunday. Uh, we have Dr. Tim Fuller. Uh, he's one of the uh, professors at Southern Bible Institute who will be bringing our message. Yeah. But, but, but listen, listen, we have some homegrown speakers as well. And I'm going to introduce them because you don't want to miss this. Uh, they're all going to be speaking on unity, Brother Michael Fugit. Deacon Corey Henderson, our Minister of Music, James Smith. Yeah, right. And listen, I need a drum roll for this one. You want to hear Robert Thomas <laughs> speak on you. Listen, I know you want to come back and hear that. So men, women, don't miss out on it. And listen, men, don't forget your financial contributions. Um, also, there will be a rehearsal on next Saturday from at 10 a.m. Uh, for the McCoy. Those that want to sing, we're going to try to do a couple of numbers on next Sunday as well. Uh, and then the following Sunday, the 14th, is Women's Day. Amen. All right, we're going to double these women around us right here, and we're going to have a glorious time in the Lord. Uh, women, you still have time uh, to make your financial contributions uh, to that event. Do you have a memory of our late Pastor Hudson? Yes, I do. Do you, you do have a fond memory of them. Uh, listen, on this week, we're putting together a Memorial Lane type uh, video we're going to put together. Uh, maybe you can think of one Memorial Minute that you had with him or Memorial Time that you had with him. Why don't you take that and share it with us? Uh, we need about one minute, two minute, maybe a uh, clip of you talking about a memory of our pastor, late pastor husband. And we need to get that to Sister Hawkins by the third. So we have a couple of days to get that out. Think of a memory you may have had uh, of Pastor Hudson 
We know that November 1st, 4th would have been his birthday, and we want to try to get that out by then. So if you have a memory that you would like to share, give that to Sister Hawkins and that crew, and they'll get that to put piece that together, and we'll look back down memory lane uh, of things that uh, Pastor Hustle touched your heart with. Okay? Don't have anything after that. So be in prayer for those we ask you to pray for. Continue to pray for our search committee. We are yet in, uh, in, 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 we got a meeting today. We are yet discussing and reviewing uh, candidates. I thank God for all the visitors who came today. What was it? Prayer. No, it's your point. Okay, if you need communion, we'll try to have someone down here. We will have someone down here between the hours of uh, 10 a.m. So come down between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Uh, we'll have someone down here if you want to come and get your communion cups, okay? Thank you, and God bless you as I pray. Amen.
and you have deserved kindness of our Lord and Savior, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Rest with us all henceforth and forevermore. May we all say.